Take a moment to pause the video, reread the question, and just make sure that this picture makes sense to you. To analyze any projectile motion question, what you really want to do is begin by superimposing a Y and X axis onto your picture. Now we have the origin labeled down here in the lower left corner. That point is basically 0, 0. But where the venom is actually launched is up here at this point. And based on our chosen XY axis, we can see that the coordinates of that point would be 0, 0,460. It's important to note that that x-coordinate is your initial position in the x-direction, and then the y-coordinate here is the initial position in the y-direction. Notice when the venom strikes the floor over here that the y-coordinate of that point is 0, because it's back at sort of ground level, so that would be 0 right there. We do not know the x-coordinate, though, and that's actually what we're looking for. So the goal in this question becomes to find this final x-coordinate, knowing the final y-coordinate is zero. And then to help us organize the information after you've drawn your picture and put on your x and y axis, you want to fill in this information into a table. So we'll begin with the initial position values. And as noted, in the x direction, that was zero. And in the y direction, it was 0 0.460 meters. The final x position and final y position would come next. We do not know the final x position, so we'll just keep that as x, but the final y position was zero, as noted. Now, for the initial velocity, most of us know that to find the initial velocity for the x direction, we simply take the given speed and then multiply that by the cosine of the launch angle. Notice this launch angle is above the horizontal or above the horizon. So that means that that angle is measured in a counterclockwise or positive fashion. If the venom had been launched below the horizontal, you would have actually used a negative 55 degrees rather than positive. But in this case, it's above the horizon, so it is a positive angle. So we're basically going to do 3.10 meters per second multiplied by the cosine of 55, that's going to give us the initial velocity in the x direction. And then for the y direction, you take that 3.10 and multiply it by the sine of 55. We'll just move this over a bit. The final velocity in the x direction turns out to be the same as the initial velocity. So this too will be 3.10 cos of 55. The reason for that, of course, is that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. We do not know the final y velocity. We do know the acceleration in the y direction. It's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And also the time is unknown in both x and y directions. So it turns out that what we're going to need to do is find that time value. And it's going to be easiest to find the time value using the information for the y direction, as we shall see. Now, for example, we know from this chapter that we have the following equation for the y direction. It gives us the displacement is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction times the time plus one half acceleration in the y direction times time squared. Now for delta y, what we want to do is expand that. We're going to do the final y position minus the initial y position. And then the right hand side will remain the same. And what we're going to need to do is plug in the known values. So recall that the final y position was 0, whereas the initial y position from our table was the 0 0.460. We will omit units right now for clarity. The initial velocity in the y direction. OK, so we wrote that in the table as 3.10 sine of 55. So we'll put that in as well. We're definitely going to need to slide this over as well. So again, that was 3.0, excuse me, 3.10 times the sine of 55. That's times the unknown time plus one half times negative 9.8 and then times time squared. So the left hand side is easy. It becomes negative 0 0.460. Let's do 3.10 times sine of 55 on our calculator. We're going to get about 2.54 t. And then this half times negative 9.8 becomes minus 4.9 t squared. We need to get this equation equal to 0 so we can solve for time. So add the 0 0.460 to the other side and then scramble your terms. So you're going to have the t squared term first, followed by the t term, followed by the constant term. And then you have to use the quadratic formula. 
So we're going to say t is equal to negative b plus or minus big square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Recall that this number right here is your a, this number here is your b, and that last number there is your c. So we'll plug those in. Now if you punch these into your calculator, and I say these because you have both plus or minus, the version using the plus sign ends up as negative 0.14 seconds, and then the version using the minus sign is 0.66 seconds. We can't have negative time in these questions, so the correct answer for the time is 0.66 seconds. So what you do is you go back to your table and you fill in that missing time. So that's going to be 0.66 seconds. And now that you have the time, you can calculate x, which again is what we're looking for. We're going to use the same equation, but we'll rewrite it in terms of x's. So delta x is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times time, plus 1 half times acceleration in the x direction times time squared. Recall that the acceleration in the x direction was 0. So this term right here will actually disappear because you're going to have 1 half times 0 times t squared. Furthermore, remember we can expand delta x to be x minus x naught. We look back at the table and we can see that x naught was zero. So this term scratches out as well. And then the initial velocity in the x direction was the 3.10 cos of 50. So there we have it. We're going to have 3.10 cos of 55. I might have said 50 there. I meant 55. Times the time, which we just computed, which was the 0.66 seconds. Let's punch this all into our calculator. And when we do so, we will see that the x position there is 1.17 meters. So that would be how far this venom is shot horizontally. So make sure you stand at least, well, not at least that value, but greater than that value if you want to be avoid being spat on. But there it is. The final answer is 1.17 meters.